find out a bit more, we can cross now live to Goma to speak with Nicole Fasina from the International Red Cross there. Miss Fasina, thanks for your time. Firstly, can you tell us the latest on this case of the pastor? Is it still an isolated case uh, taught to be contained? Thanks so much for having me today. Um, so yes, we did have the news yesterday that there was a positive case of the pastor who traveled from Matembo to Goma. The response have been rapid so far with authorities uh, identifying the, the cases, the contacts, and vaccinating them yesterday, and the individual being admitted to an Ebola treatment center. This just goes to show how, how preparedness efforts pay off. Uh, so we have been working in Goma on safe and dignified burial teams, preparing our teams. Even yesterday, we were training healthcare workers, which are exactly the individuals who would have been receiving people like the pastor at the health clinics and identifying signs and symptoms to quickly respond. In order to chase this epidemic, as you've seen over the past few months, uh, the cases have been fluctuating and moving, uh, though the epicenter right now is in Beni, but what's critical is that we focus still on our preparedness efforts um, and the continued response. Indeed, the health ministry saying that the Goma in particular, that city of two million people, is very prepared. WHO saying, though, you know, uh, you know, they're worried that this could lead to a further spread. It is a city of a, a vast, vast population. And the pastor did travel through checks on that Ebola virus, did he not? So what's critical for us to remember is that at the core of this response, we are fighting a medical outbreak. That's clear. But we are also fighting a human outbreak. Think about it. Uh, the Ebola is most contagious at the end of someone's life, but the process of someone dying is a very human trait. And what we're seeing and what we're hearing from lessons learned in West Africa Ebola and now is that we also need to be working with the communities and fighting the perceptions against the medical outbreak. It's only when the two go hand in hand that we'll really be able to control this outbreak um, and follow the spread. And, and to date, uh, have you seen that change, notably when it comes to how people react to the Ebola virus outside of Goma? Yes, we have. Um, so when we started working in the communities, uh, our data shows that we had 29% of, of death alerts uh, coming from the communities themselves. But after months of working in the communities and explaining why, what the signs and symptoms are, why it's important to seek treatment very quickly from an Ebola treatment center, we then saw that now in some areas, it's 89% of the alerts are coming from the communities themselves. And for me, this is exactly what we need to see, a community-led response. I was just in Beni last week, and we were speaking to some of our volunteers, and we asked them, you risk your lives each and every day to, to bury the dead of your loved ones in a safe and dignified way. Why are you still continuing to do this almost one year on into the outbreak? And they said specifically, it's our responsibility to protect our community. It's our responsibility to keep them safe. And again, this is exactly the type of community-led response we need to see. Okay, uh, Miss Nicole Fasina, thanks so much for bringing us that update and uh, that positive view of where things uh, are hopefully headed when in relation to that Ebola outbreak.